sweep. It's a quick one. Again, just one you can see. It's only four slides on here. It's actually two. So the difference, we're still doing trinomials. They're going to change four so that that is there and that is there. All we've done is we've added a y term in the middle and a y squared term at the end. So what do you think our binomials have to look like for that to work? All right. One variable in each. Yeah, that's the only way it's going to work out. So if this gave you an x squared, a single x and nothing, then to add a y squared to that, we just add a y to the second term of each binomial. So if we were to expand that really quick with FOIL, you get x squared plus 6xy plus 8y squared. That middle y term comes from these y's. And that final y squared term comes from those y's. So when we're factoring trinomials like this, our binomials have to have a y. That's the only difference. The way you factor the numbers is going to be all the same. You're just going to add in a y. It's confusing to look at. When you do a couple examples, it'll make sense. So if this was your question, the factors of it are just x plus 2y and x plus 4y. It's just undoing your factor or your expanding. It's all factoring it. x plus 4y. Same thing as right here. That's all our factoring is, right? It's just unfoiling. That's what we learned in 2. Point, whatever that was, 2.6, I think. Is that taking factors out, it's just like unmultiplying. Yep. I'll let it. 3.11. Pardon? Yeah, this is just more factoring. It's factoring something new. So before we factored things that look like x squared plus b, x plus c variables. And then we added in an a, and now we've added in y's. Well, the same thing. Johnny. Will this be on the unit test? Yes. Yeah, you can bet it. So let's look at some examples. We do the exact same thing. So what? how do we factor trinomials? Diamond. What goes on the top of the diamond, Johnny? Uh, yep, 30, A times C. What goes on the bottom of the diamond, Carter? 13. And what goes on the sides, Taylor? Three and ten. Three and ten. Three times ten equals thirty. Three plus ten equals thirteen. Now you can do whichever method you like. I like to break them up. So I go x squared plus ten xy plus three xy plus thirty y squared. All the steps are still the same. The difference is going to be what I can factor out. So what's the greatest common factor in this first half? X, yeah. And that leaves me with X plus 10Y. What's the greatest factor in the second side? Emma? 3Y. 
30 y squared. So my greatest common factor was a 3y from these two terms. And now we still do the same thing. These are the same. Oh, shoot this up. I just wrote the wrong thing. They are the same. It's x plus when we divide out 3y, we're left with s. Sorry, yeah. We factor out that 3y, that's what we're left with. We do the same thing. So that is the same, so that's your first thing. And x plus 3y is left over. Exact same thing. It's just got y. It looks a lot scarier, looks a lot harder to do. It's really not. Any questions? Yes. Hey, I'll do this. How about I do this next one the other way? Okay. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Has everybody written down the first one? Yeah. You can erase it? Yeah. Okay, great. So when I'm doing the first one, or the second one, sorry, what do we have to do first? Matthew. You're ready. What do we call it, though? The greatest common factor. We have to take out a greatest common factor. Can I erase this now? Okay. Okay. What's the greatest common factor I can take out of all three terms? Three. So if I take out a three, I'll have to get a squared minus five ab minus what's two fifty two divided by three five negative eighty four. Taking out our GCF. Now we move on to just factoring this. We do our diamond. What goes on top? Keith. So the top of the diamond is whatever is here, this value, times this value. So it's 1 times negative 84. So it's just negative 84. So what goes on the bottom of the diamond? Your B term. So the bottom goes is from there. Yeah. Yeah, what are the sides, Sam? Uh, negative 12, 12, 7. That's a trickier one to find. <coughs> now we're going to do it using the other method. So, the other method says whatever values here in front, we have to divide one of those by it, right? But the number in front is just a, a 1. So you don't have to do any division. The other method, when the a value is equal to 1, is actually really, really nice. Because it's just going to be x and x. And you're just going to plug those values in. 8 and 12, positive 7. And the 3 is still out in front right here. That's your final answer. So the other method, when a is equal to 1, super easy. What am I missing? I'm missing something. What is it, Regan? I'm missing my b. Yeah. There's a b here and a b here. 
So that's where the other method gets a little bit trickier, but if you just remember to put in your fee value, you're good. That makes sense, Kendra? Yeah. Any questions? Same stuff from this morning. That's a little more confusing. All right. Let's do a couple more quick ones. Wait up to you first. Okay. Think about your greatest common factor. And here's my question. Yeah. Uh, F, you just have to create your own. You're right. You're jumping way ahead. Slow down. <laughs> What's your first step? Greatest common factor. What's your greatest common factor of these three terms, Josh? Greatest common factor is five. Do you think of five with all three things? Greatest common factor. Something that can divide into all three of those numbers. There is one. Ten is a multiple of those numbers. Factors are things that divide in. There is no greatest common factor. So we move straight on to our diamond method. What? Yeah, one goes into all of them, but if you factor out a one, it doesn't make a difference, right? Happens. Yeah. What goes on the top of the diamond, Joe? Yeah, bottom of the diamond, Johnny. Negative five. Where are the sides, Carter? Negative four and negative one. Negative four and negative one. So let's do the method where you divide out. So I know that. I'm going to end up with brackets. I know that I need a 2x at some point. It's the only way I got this, right? What do I have to do with that 2, Emily? I know. Someone distracting you? Yeah. Joe, up here. I watched I watched this last time. Joe, I saw it. Michael, you can't tell me you wasn't me. It was him. Oh. And then if you, oh, a quick little lie gives the other person a rat out, eh? Okay. Yeah. Back up, back up. There we go. Neither one of you touch it. Okay, so what do we have to do with that too? Did you do it? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Johnny? Get out. Go. Go sit in the hall. What do we have to do with that 2 value? Josh. We have to divide one of these two terms by 2. Which one should we divide by 2? Matthew. Yeah, and 4. That gives you negative 2, right? Where does that go? Does it go into that one or this one? It goes in the second one. So it goes in whichever one doesn't have the 2 at the front. So your negative 2 goes here. But it's not just negative 2, it's negative 2 what? Yeah. And then your final value over here is just whatever's left over. Negative 1. Negative 1 what? Yeah. And that's your final answer. Can't you again? Yeah. Do you want me to go through one more time? No, no, I'll let you few. Oh, we're out of our order? No, but you see how there's like that and all the fun stuff. So what are you asking? What are you asking? Okay. I'll say it at the end. So for the next question. Okay. For D, it's the same thing. So we're not going to go over it. I think you guys got a grasp on it. I don't have a slide for E. So I'm just going to write it up here. Has everybody got their notes here? 
Could you erase it? Well, we are in, already on EM talk. It's 2x squared minus 18y squared. This is our first new concept in a long time. What's different about E? It only has two terms. It's missing that middle term, right? So this is still your A, and this is still your C, but it's, we're missing that B, X, Y. We're still going to factor using the same ideas. It's just going to come out with a different answer, and it's not a trinomial. So we're doing the same method because it's called something, it's called a difference of squares. I'll show you why in a second. What's the very first step to every problem we do? Greatest common factor. What's the greatest common factor of that? Two. When you take on a two, you're left with x squared minus nine y squared. No. That's your difference of squares. This is something called a difference of squares, meaning that the first term has a perfect square to it. So if you took the square root of x squared, you would just get x. And the second term, if you took the square root of 9, you get, and if you took the square root of y squared, you get y. So all these things can be square rooted perfectly. So we call it a difference of squares. But we treat it, yeah. If this and this, if they're all perfect square roots like that. So if this was a 10, it wouldn't be a difference of squares. Because it's a 9, we can square root it. So we know that we can do uh, we can factor it further. You still use the diamond method, except it's going to get a little bit different. So what's the top of the diamond? If it was a regular question, how do you find the top of the diamond? A times C. What's your A value here? Oh. One. What's your C value here? Negative nine. So one times negative nine gives you negative nine. The hard part is your B value. So what can you put as your B value? Zero. Yeah. Okay. Negative three and plus three are your sides. The trick is remembering that the bottom is zero. So now you need things that multiply to be negative nine but add to be zero. Still the same thing. And we still treat it the same way. So how would we solve this normally? Our 2 is still here. We know we're getting a binomial. We know we're getting a binomial. We know that they're both x's. And what do you fill in as your blanks? Negative 3 and plus 3. What am I missing? Yeah, I'm missing my y values. That's a difference of squares. Pretty simple. What's important to note is that this value right here is a negative sign. You couldn't do it if it was a positive sign. Because that means this would be positive. And how would you find two things that multiply to be a positive and add to be a zero? Can't be done. So that's going to be a trick you guys see on a test. It's going to be find difference of squares or identify if it's a difference of squares or know when to stop the difference of squares. If that changes to a positive, you can't do it anymore. 
For sure, because that's a tough one. Are we good for this so I can erase it? Okay. The diamond, still the exact same. We still have our two out front. Because we factored a two out from the very beginning, right? And we're left with x squared minus 9y squared. Now we're going to take, you almost got to imagine there's a 0xy there in the middle, right? That's where the 0 value came from, is knowing that that b value was 0. So you're going to break that 0xy up into a positive 3 and a negative 3. Yeah, exactly, Joe. So, plus 3xy, <coughs> minus 3xy. And then minus 9 squared is 9y squared is still there. So you've, almost, you've added 0 into the equation. Take your greatest color factor from this, it's x. Take your greatest color factor from that, it's 3y. You have. This one is sorry, negative three watts. Make sense? So I drew my dotted line. took my greatest common factor on both sides. I took my factors out, right, Emma? And then my final step is just take the three, the x plus 3 away, right? Factor that out. And your final answer becomes 2. Nope, doesn't matter. It'll still work out. Aaron, that's good. Any questions about this? Maya. Okay. Josh. Yeah, buddy.